Hey guys, all right, so in this video, uh, we're gonna go ahead and continue preparing for the AP exam. This time we're looking at a uh, particle motion problem, okay? So hopefully you guys can see it. And uh, I didn't make it too small, let me see here. All right, <clears throat> so when you guys are looking at a particle motion, as soon as you see, okay, particle motion, you gotta think, okay, they're gonna ask me um, how far left maybe, how far right. They're gonna ask you about the speed. They're gonna ask you uh, maybe total distance. They're gonna ask you acceleration. Um, those are the things that you should be thinking about when you are when you get a particle motion, okay? They're gonna probably ask you when it, it comes to a stop, at what point. And they will at some point ask you the position, okay? Where is the particle at? you know, two seconds or three seconds and whatnot. So be ready for that. <clears throat> and that one is a fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's get into it. And this is not very hard, guys. This is not very hard. So it says a particle moves along the x-axis so that its velocity is given by this function. This is a calculated problem. There is one time t, t sub r, in the interval between 0 and 2 <clears throat> when the particle is at rest. Okay, that means he's not moving. Find that time. For the time between zero and T sub R, is the particle moving to the right or to the left? This is classic, guys. Okay, they're not trying to trick you, but... <clears throat> okay, so you got to ask yourself, okay, they give you velocity. Okay, when is the particle at rest? When is it not moving? Well, that's easy. When the velocity is equal to zero. So what you want to do is you want to say your velocity equal to zero. Okay, and you can use your calculator as a solver, or another thing you can do is uh, you can graph it and find where it crosses the x-axis at, at uh, that'll be your, your zero, okay? And I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot my calculator, but uh, if you do it correctly, okay, because this is a calculated problem, you should get the time, whoops, um, and that becomes T is equal to 1.4, I'm just going to truncate, 2.5. So that's what you should get. Um, when I get back to school, I'll make sure I bring my calculator so I can go ahead and do it with you here and show you how to, how to use your calculator. But that's it, guys. That's it. When is a particle at rest? When the velocity is equal to zero, you set it equal to zero, you... Hopefully, you know how to use it, and, and that's all it is. <clears throat> For part B, okay, it says find the acceleration, okay, of the particle at time t equals 1.5. That is not hard at all. It says show the setup for your calculations. Is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing, okay? Now, this is important. The speed of the particle, is it increasing or decreasing at time t equals 1.5? So, what I have to do, I have to find the acceleration. Now, they give you velocity. So, acceleration, okay, at 1.5, well, that's the same as taking the derivative of velocity at 1.5, okay? So, you have to take the derivative, all right? And you're going to go ahead and use your calculator. All right. And if you do that, and just plug it in, take the derivative, plug in, plug in 1.5, and you should get negative 1. Okay? You should get negative 1. Or negative 0.999, but negative 1 is fine. All right. So that's the first part. Find the acceleration. And then it says, show the setup of your calculation. Is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing? This is common. Now, to find the speed, you need to look at both the velocity and the acceleration at 1.5. So we know the acceleration at 1.5 is negative 1. So what do I do now? Velocity at 1.5, I just plug that, that value in. And you should get negative 0.0. .0 seven six eight if it's truncated okay uh and that again that's negative okay that's less than zero so remember they both have the same sign so they're going to be increasing okay they both have the same sign so how would you write that because it says explain your reasoning 
and you would say because a of 1.5 and the velocity of 1.5 are both negative um, you can put negative or the same sign I'm just writing fast just for time's sake the speed is increasing at t equals 1.5 so at that specific speed at 1.5 seconds the speed is increasing okay and that's it guys that's it but what i want you to see is that this is very common for them to ask when you see a particle motion problem okay all right <clears throat> part c part c the position <clears throat> of the particle at time t is x of t. Its position at time t equals one is x of one is equal to three. Find the position of the particle at time t equals four. Show the setup of your calculation. So, <clears throat> very common. They ask you a position of the particle. Now this is the fundamental theorem. So how do you find the position? Okay, well, what do they give you? Okay, they don't give you anything else here. They just give you the position at t equals 1. But how do you find the position from the velocity, right? Hopefully, you remember that you have to integrate the rate. If you integrate velocity, what do you end up with? Position. Okay, well, what do I put here, right? Well, what do they give you? Look at They give you x sub 1. They give you at time equals 1. So from 1 to where? To four and there it is so fundamental theorem x of four minus x of one rearrange that uh, bad boy and let's see what are we trying to find x of four okay so that means x of four is going to be equal if we take this guy over to the left is going to be x sub one plus the integral from one to four of vt dt all right, and this is what you want to put. So then x of 4, x of 1, they tell me is negative 3, plus the integral from 1 of 4 of vt dt. Now, you're going to have to use your calculator for that, right? But that's not hard at all. And again, I'm sorry, guys, I don't have my calculator with me. But I think everybody um, knows how to do that. And if you do, let's see, you get uh, negative 3 plus 0 0.197117, all right? And that's going to give you negative 2.802. I'll leave it that way, okay? Um, so the position of the particle at time t equals 4 is negative 2 point, okay? So that's it. I mean, that's it. Because it says show the setup of your calculations. You did. You set the value. You're done. Was that very hard? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. But if you know what to look for, it becomes very, very easy. So remember, this is very key. So look out for this. Okay? All right. <clears throat> this one is just pretty straightforward. Go back and if, if it helps, go back and look at my other videos that I've done on particle motion. And you're going to see the same similarities. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. So hopefully you're starting to see the pattern. But the last one, it says, find the total distance. And that hopefully should uh, trigger um, in your mind absolute value. But find the total distance traveled by the particle over the interval between 1 and 4. And to show the setup of your calculations. Okay. All it is, guys, speed is the absolute value of velocity. That's it. From where? Well, they tell you from 1 to 4. Well, that's all you got to do is you got to make sure. Now, make sure you put your absolute value, okay, and put your, put your function, okay, in absolute value. Okay, so make sure your absolute values are here, okay? Um, because sometimes students, they, believe it or not, they can get that mixed up. So, all you do is just plug it in. And you should end up with 0 0.9581. I mean, that's it. 
And students think, man, is that all I got to do? I got all this empty space and that's all they want me to put? Believe it or not, that's it. But this is a calculator problem. So <clears throat> was that hard? No, it wasn't. Very doable. So hopefully that helps, guys. If you have any questions, uh, reach out. But um, I hope to do a next one real soon. All right, guys, see you in the next one.